Good morning, Christ Church. Good to be with you this morning again. And this morning, I have the opportunity and privilege to bring you a devotion. And so I'm going to bring that to you from Psalm 37. I'm going to read through it, and then I'm just going to break it down just a little bit. Psalm 37, the first nine verses says, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be anxious of those who do wrong. For like grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desire of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. They carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. The Psalms are are interesting because we can learn so much from them because we relate to them in the way we relate to our own emotions. When David, whoever writes the psalm, says what he says, we get the sense that we can participate in those feelings and in those thoughts. And he starts off and he says this, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong, for like grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. I was kind of thinking about this the other day and I thought every one of us reads that psalm and in our minds we may be thinking of an evil person or somebody that we perceive to be evil. Ironically, I wonder how many evil people are reading the same psalm and thinking other people are evil and trying to claim that for themselves. It got me thinking, I think in life we have people that we get along with people that we don't get along with. Some people are evil, and we acknowledge that, but sometimes we just have differences with people. When we read that psalm, we immediately want to apply it into somebody else's life, when in actual fact, what we should be doing is using that as an opportunity to reflect on our own lives. If somebody else were reading the psalm, would they put you in that position? Would they question your motives? Would they question the actions that you're doing? Would they be upset with the things that you're doing? Now, I'm not saying we're evil, but what I am saying is maybe sometimes we should stop and times like that cause us to reflect and say, is there something in my life that I need to consider that might be upsetting my brother, might be offending my brother? Maybe uh, I am in a situation where my sister has a complaint against me and I now need to reflect. And a psalm like that, instead of applying it in an aggressive way to others, should cause us to reflect humbly on ourselves. So it should lead us to humility. But the other thing that happens in the psalm is the psalmist then tells us there are some things we can do when there are situations out of our control. In fact, this is very, very practical. It's not so abstract. It is, in fact, more a list of things you can do when you're in a situation, you're feeling anxious, you're seeing the wicked succeed, you're seeing the evil in the world, and you don't know what to do. First, as we've said, in humility, reflect on your own life. And then there's some practical things. Trust in the Lord and do good. Very practical. Stop, trust in the Lord and do good. Verse 4 says, take delight in the Lord. Stop and take delight in Him. Delight in His works. Delight in what He has done for you. Delight in what He still is doing in your life. What He will still do in your life. Verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. Maybe you're anxious about something. Maybe you're anxious about what's going on in the world today. Well, we're going to trust in God. We can commit our ways to God. We're going to believe that He's going to do the right thing in our lives and through our lives. Verse 7 is beautiful. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. How many times when you're in a situation where you don't know what's going on or you're concerned about life, you want to do something about it. And here the psalmist says, no, no, stop, wait, be still, wait for God. And he follows it up with, do not fret. Verse 8 says, another very practical thing, refrain from anger, turn from wrath, do not 
fret. And it sums it up in verse 9. It says, those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. So much we want to do. So much we think we should do. In actual fact, we should stop. We should reflect on God, reflect on His goodness, commit our ways to Him, trust in Him, and we will see His goodness today, tomorrow, and in the future. Well, I pray that is a blessing to you. Be blessed. Enjoy the day. God is with us and God is for us. Amen.